Hi everyone, I'm Karina Kocheri from OBS. I'm very pleased to be here today and really grateful to everyone who made this event possible. So OBS is an action and research collective specialized in participatory urban planning and design. We have expertise in anthropology, economics, urban planning, landscape architecture and architecture. OBS was born in 2008 in the neighborhood of Dharavi in Mumbai. And this is a picture taken outside our very first office. As place-based practitioners, we at Herbs have been trying to reimagine our roles by beginning to recognize, celebrate and engage with communities through our practice. I'm going to use the next 15 minutes to talk about how communities actively shape and produce the environments that they live and work in. So for centuries, Communities around the world have engaged in this very human activity of making, may it be arts, crafts, homes, and the larger natural and built environment, using resources at hand. So it was in Dharavi that we saw this in action and developed confidence in the ability of people to collectively produce their own habitats, even in the most difficult conditions. It is here we formulated our motto, user-generated cities. We also slowly built an approach to facilitate community participation, which is an existing aspect of Indian cities that could inspire a new generation of urban planners and city officials. We work with communities and the local economy by working with local building contractors on various housing projects and also working with local artisans. So we are convinced that change happens incrementally and want to be part of this process by embedding ourselves in the locality. This is Dharavi's main road with our current office in the red and yellow building in the background. So you may be curious to know more about Dharavi, a neighborhood infamously known as Asia's largest slum, a setting for films like Slumdog Millionaire and a contested territory. This is a map of Mumbai city with the neighborhood of Dharavi in red. Dharavi is just about 2.5 square kilometers in size and supports almost a million inhabitants. It is not only a residential neighborhood, but has optimized every space to function as a site of production. It has a thriving economy with a turnover that is estimated to be about 500 million to 1 billion US dollars per year. Dharavi is home to leather, pottery, plastic recycling industries, glass and metal fabrication works, making of farsans, papads and other snacks, manufacturing of garments, amongst the many diverse industries that are set up here. The picture shows a few glimpses of life in Dharavi, from the bustling main market street to the interior lanes. And the insides of live workspaces. What you will notice is that Dharavi is a low-rise, high-density, mixed-use neighborhood. We try to avoid labels like slum and informal and call Dharavi a homegrown neighborhood built by people to fulfill their needs and aspirations. So what urban forms and typologies support the functioning of homegrown neighborhoods? So the tool house is a term we coined to describe the live-work housing format that dominates Dharavi. It is an urban typology that seamlessly merges spaces of domesticity and economic productivity. Even large innovative multinational corporations have had humble beginnings in people's homes and garages. But most urban building zoning laws that neatly separate residential and commercial activities do not support this live-work format. This is a typical tool house in Dharavi, where leather goods are made. The workers are provided accommodation in the same house. And these are tool houses that line the main streets, with shops on the ground floor and houses on top. We are engaging with this typology through a project that we initiated called the Homegrown Street. We systematically first documented the various forms of this typology on a street in Dharavi called Sangam Gali. We spoke to residents about um, their current situation, their future needs, and created design briefs for each of these houses. This is a plan of Sangam Gali lined with tool houses. 
we are now working with local contractors to redesign each of the houses based on the residents projected future needs and aspirations here is an example of a new design by a local contractor for one of the houses on the street we then work with local artisans to make models of the proposed designs the models help to recognize and celebrate the tool house they are means to trigger discussions amongst residents civic officials and the planning fraternity about this live work typology the zoning and building regulations hardly support this live work format and it is not currently in the lexicon of urban planners making the future of these collectively produced habitats uncertain so how did such a productive network of communities and economies come about did dharavi just spring up out of nowhere to answer these questions we need to rewind a bit and understand more about its origins that are deeply tied to the koli community of mumbai kolis are the indigenous fishing community of mumbai that inhabited the coastal estuarine landscape where the meeti river merges with the arabian sea On the left is a cluster of islands from the 17th century dotted with numerous koli wadas which are the fishing villages of the koli community. And on the right you see how land was reclaimed to convert the islands into present day Mumbai a process that laid the foundation for one of the most vibrant and productive cities of the world but also cut off the koli wadas from the sea leading to loss of livelihood and displacement. This is present day Dharavi Koliwada whose residents have we have worked with since 2008 In the picture you see the low rise high density neighborhood of Koliwada on banks of the Meeti river In the background are the typical high rises of Mumbai city The map shows Dharavi Koliwada and the Meeti river whose waters provide sustenance and livelihood to the fishing community Over time the Koliwadas became urbanized villages around which the city grew The once marshy lands around Koliwada were settled by waves of migrant artisanal communities including leather workers from Tamil Nadu and potters from Gujarat This set the precedent for the growth of Dharavi Some Kolis continue their fishing activities and here is our friend Maxim Koli in his man-made pond within the Michi River These ponds are clean and dredged regularly and are used to farm fish. The Kolis actively engage with the landscape and are directly dealing with the impacts of urbanization and climate change. The Koliwadas also maintain a village-like fabric in the busy city. Now Dharavi Koliwada like the other Koliwadas fought to remove the slum label which had been conveniently slapped on their ancestral bleak colonial habitats. This has exempted them from the much talked about Dharavi redevelopment project which seems to be underway. The reality is that Dharavi and Koliwada are not neighborhoods in stasis but have been improving and self redeveloping over the past years. So we couldn't help asking can Koliwada's self development become an inspiration for a people centric development of the rest of Dharavi and similar settlements around the world? The pictures from a workshop we conducted back in 2008 with the residents of Dharavi Koliwada where we discovered the willingness amongst the Koli community to explore all types of alternative ideas for development which is important to probe the question of form typology and diversity of habitats We have recently started work on an action based comprehensive development plan for Dharavi Koliwada which promotes the user driven incremental redevelopment of the neighborhood the abcd of dharavi koliwada will be produced with the active participation of its residents through a series of urban in situ interventions we aim to engage the community of koliwada in the production of a comprehensive plan for the improvement of their neighborhood we're in the initial stage of the project and this involves a lot of interaction and engagement with the community to flesh out what these interventions could be we have been visiting the koliwada fish market frequently to establish a connection with the koli women both buying and selling fish 
We have also been meeting with the community to discuss plans for a water and sanitation project led by the Dharavi Koli Jamaat, which is the Koli Wada's governing body. And alongside this, we've been making maps and diagrams and a model of the neighborhood, which we plan to use as a tool to further engage the community and gather more accurate knowledge about the buildings and topography. Based on our conversation with various members of the community so far, the interventions we're thinking of um, could include the upgradation of the existing fish market with cold storage facilities and maybe a new roof, the restoration and regeneration of Koli land along the Niti River, which is now used as a parking lot and dumping ground for the city, but it is occasionally cleaned up and used by the Kolis to celebrate festivals that worship the life-giving waters of the Niti River, festivals like Narili Purnama. We have also already commenced work on the planning and phasing of the water supply and sanitation infrastructure for the neighbourhood. Due to the Koliwadas being perceived as slums, they were neglected by civic authorities and had to manage water supply and sanitation infrastructure on their own. Um, here you see how the water supply lines currently overlap with the sewage system, which as we all know is a very hazardous situation. So what we've been doing is mapping the current situation, helping the Koli Jamaat with making presentations to civic authorities, creating awareness amongst the residents and planning and phasing the implementation of the project. It's been a long and fun journey since we started in 2008 and we've actually exported our learnings from Dharavi to our offices in Bogota, Geneva, Goa and Paris. We are eager to continue our work in Dharavi and other neighbourhoods around the world. To conclude, I'm going to need you to indulge me in our guessing game. Here are a series of pictures. Please guess where they were taken. You can type our answers in the chat box. So this is for picture one. You can maybe just type picture one and where it was taken. Uh, picture two. Maybe I'll go back to that, show it to you for a little longer. And this is picture three. So type your answers in the chat box. And uh, thank you for your time and attention. Hope you enjoyed um, the work that we're doing. And um, we would be very happy to entertain any uh, requests for collaboration or in, you know, in research or even in the projects that we're doing. Um, and you can check out our website, oaks.net. Um, thank you for your time.